study. How to prepare for Advent. Last year, my wife Joy and I, and this year we have our one of our daughters with us, we talked about how we as a family keep Advent. Different traditions, different saint days, ember days, the Sundays in Advent, even things like Christmas trees and all that. So today we are going to go through that again, and we have a couple modifications since last year. Um, I think we're going to start with history. Let's do it. All right. So a brief history of Advent. I realize a lot of the audience here uh, does not or is not Catholic or has never heard of Advent or maybe you've heard of it, but you don't know where it comes from. And of course, my tab is missing. 200 tabs open, dear. <laughs> Hold on. I'll just search it. I'm reading this uh, from my website, taylormarshall.com. Here it is. 10 things you should know about Advent. I'm just reading this from my site. And this kind of gives you a quick history of what Advent's all about. So the first recorded reference to a preparation for Christmas is found in the Acts of the Synod of Saragossa, Spain. The year is 380, 380. The Synod declared that all baptized Christians should be present in church from December 17th until December 25th. So if you do the math right there, that's eight days before Christmas. So it's like a pre-octave. Um, St. Caesarius of Arles, he died in 542. He delivered the first documented homilies on Advent. So we see the first reference in the 300s. And then we start seeing sermons in the 500s. The Synod of Macon in Gaul in 581 is our first witness Advent. Mm -hmm. The liturgical norms for Lent are to be kept from November 11th to December 24th. This is a full 40 days. This is like the Eastern Church. That's what the Eastern Church does. And clearly they're associating here Lent with Advent. That's why the color is violet. Uh, Pope Gregory the Great in 604, he gave a sermon on Advent. So we know that in Rome, uh, it's now universally accepted. In the 7th century, so 600s, Advent is celebrated in Spain with not four, but five Sundays. It's called the five Sundays of Advent. The Eastern churches, we have witness of celebrating Advent in the 8th century. It's much more stricter there than it was in the West. St. Gregory the Seventh, this is by, he dies in 1085. He reduces the number of Sundays in Advent from five down to what we know as four. So for the first almost thousand years, Advent was five and it got dropped to four. That's the whole idea of it being 40 days. The third Sunday of Advent is called Gaudete, and it marks the middle point on our journey to Christmas, and it's rose. So the color of vestments are rose. Looks like pink, but you're supposed to say rose. Priests somehow get upset when you say pink vestments. They say, no, they're rose-colored <clears throat> vestments. The Advent wreath, which we'll talk about today, is um, a new invention. comes from the 1800s in Germany. And it might even have a Lutheran origin. Watch out. We still do it. <laughs> uh, and number 10, the liturgical season of Advent anticipates the second <clears throat> Advent. So there's there's a double thing going on here. We're looking back in time to the first Advent, and we're looking into the future for the second Advent of Christ. So there's your quick history on Advent. Did I miss anything? Anything you need to add? Um, no, not that I could notice. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I mentioned yesterday I did a, a triple challenge. Mm -hmm. People were kind of making fun of me because on the title, I somehow wrote tripe challenge. And they're like, do we have to eat tripe during Lent? And no, it's triple. I added back the L. But the triple <laughs> challenge this year in 2020, last year, the challenge was attend the traditional Latin mass for the four Sundays of Advent. And a lot of people did that. And you never stopped going to Latin mass. That's great. Mm -hmm. This year... The triple challenge is attend the traditional Latin Mass for the four Sundays of Advent. 
pray the rosary every day, maybe bump it up to 15 decades, um, fast. And then I also said, I'm going to be reading St. John's gospel. I invite you to read St. John's gospel mm -hmm. on your own, or I'll just be recording it all during Advent here on YouTube. That's the plan. So, um, let's talk about family traditions, martial family <clears throat> traditions. Um, neither joy nor I were, we weren't raised in a, a Catholic home. So I didn't grow up doing any Advent. No. I mean, we always prepared a like Christmas special at our church. We were, I was mm -hmm. raised in the Baptist church. And so there was a lot of preparation for celebrating Christmas. It was all very celebratory, like fun and <clears throat> lots of, you know, staged parties, which generally we end up doing anyway, uh, while observing Advent because of you know work and friends and school, there's always get togethers and, um, but we didn't do anything poten uh, penitential or, you know, sp specifically extra devotional until Christmas day, really. So, um, we were both ready when we got married to jump into all of the traditions you can, um, because we thought it would make, um, you know, such a fun memory for our children. And it really helps restart, uh, the family. If you've gotten in bad habits from maybe, um, not doing the whole rosary every night or not sitting down for dinner together, which is a good time to light your Advent wreath or something like that. It's a good time to kind of reset, restart those good habits you need to do as a family and have that intentional family time all through Advent. So I think that's another good benefit to it on top of just personal devotion um, as you prepare to celebrate Christ's birth. So, yeah. Yeah, we um, <clears throat> we became Anglican. We were Episcopalian and I was an Episcopalian priest before becoming a Catholic. So that was how we got plugged into Advent and doing Advent. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it's a neat thing, you know, when you've never heard about it. Mm -mm. And um, some of those... Some of those traditions that we started as a family back then have stayed with us, like the St. Thomas Day Indian food. Yeah. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, but also looking back into our family's history with Advent, I was trying to figure out what year it was, dear. But I think it was 2010 or 11, that Advent, we started praying the rosary every night. Yes. With the candles. Yeah, probably about 10 years ago. Yeah. And... And then, I mean, you had to work and go to school a lot at night for several years, and you were adamant, no joy. I know you've got all the kids by yourself, but we still need to do the rosary every night, you mm -hmm. know, and like, let's make this something that we yeah. don't, you know, just scrub when it's not convenient or not easy. Um, and let's just, you know, make it a part of our lives as our family. So Advent's a good time to start those new um, family devotions, gather the family around together nightly, um, preparing for Christmas. And of course, since it's like the anticipation of Christmas, your kids will probably be a little bit more open to it, um, especially if we punctuate it with the other fun stuff that is all through the month of December. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great thing for families. Yeah, we, we started the, day, the daily rosary when it was the first Sunday of Advent. I can't remember what year it was. It was 2010 or 2011. And... We said, if you're good and you pray a decade, you can light a candle or extinguish a candle. And we had the little snuffer. Yeah, we had a special snuffer. And supper. our kids, you know, back then they would have been eight and down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about eight years old and down. And that was a big deal. And they loved those candles. So we would turn off all the lights in the our little living room. And we'd have our advent wreath. And have the candles and the kids just thought that was so magical and it was yeah. kind of what we needed to calm them down and pray uh, the rosary. Mm -hmm. And so then once Christmas happened, December 26th, we prayed the rosary and then December 27th, we prayed the rosary and we just kept on doing that all the way up until this day. And we don't do it now, but after that, we kind of realized that oh, we need a little home altar we had a little statue on it and we put candles on it and we let the kids continue to light the candles. That was kind mm -hmm. of how they got excited about doing the, the nightly rosary. Mm -hmm. So make sure you use candles. Kids love candles. Um, mm -hmm. So I, the first thing that's kind of a big deal for our family is St. Nicholas Day. 
and I brought in a resident expert on <laughs> on St. Nicholas. Do you like St. Nicholas Day? Where does St. Nicholas live? Uh, in heaven. In heaven, that's right. Yeah, he lives in heaven. Is he, does he protect children? Yes, St. Nicholas is the protector of children. And so I think even though usually the first Sunday of Advent begins before December 6th, this is kind of for our family, the kickoff day. And St. Nicholas visits the house and he brings a little down payment treat to the kids, doesn't he? What mm -hmm. What does St. Nicholas usually bring you on December 6th? The candy canes, chocolate, and always a little different treat. Mm -hmm. So candy canes, chocolate, and a little treat. Sometimes he puts them in the shoes. A couple of years when we've needed shoes, oh, like yes, Santa brings shoes. shoes. Yeah, everyone... I think last year Santa brought everybody shoes. Mm -hmm. Maybe the year before. Shoes. Yeah, yeah, everyone kind of needed a new pair of mass shoes, and Santa knew and brought everybody a new pair of shoes with the candy inside. So sometimes it's a good opportunity. That's fun, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of gets everybody excited. And then also, what about pajamas? Oh yeah, he brings you some. Yes, we get new pajamas. Mm -hmm. We hang up our stockings on Saint Nicholas Day. Um, so we have a lot we really of kind of start getting some decoration going. Well, we put up like Advent stuff, like the nativity without baby Jesus mm -hmm. and other stuff like that, right when Advent begins. And then St. Nicholas Day comes, we put mm -hmm. up the stockings and kind of do the we, Santa Claus stuff. We have an icon of St. Nicholas that we've had since before we were Catholic. I like to bring that out and put it up on the wall. So, yeah, St. Saint, Saint Nicholas Day is fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you like uh -huh. it? I like it when I get to see Santa on the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see Santa on the cameras? you going to watch them and see if he watch comes to the house? <laughs> so that's pretty fun, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. And then, so in Texas, it's not too cold year-round, but it starts to get a little bit cold December 6th, so... Our kids get pajamas, and of course, kids eight kids are always growing. So, um, usually, we get family matching pajamas. Sometimes, sometimes not. You know, it depends on the year. Kinda, Last kinda year, the pajamas year. were gnome. You know, like the yard gnomes with the pointy hats. Mm -hmm. Gnome themed. And then I wasn't a big fan of those. <laughs> I think I already sent mine to Goodwill. You're just hard to please. You're hard to <laughs> well, please. I just, Gnomes are, are not my thing. I still have <clears throat> mine. You still wear your gnome pajamas? They're in the laundry room. They're in the laundry room. Folded up. Folded mm -hmm. up. Good. Good. Okay, so that's December 6th. And, you know, I think if you have kids, St. Nicholas is the patron of kids. And he's the protector of kids. Um, there's the story of the little boys who get pickled. And St. Nicholas brings them back to life or saves them. There's the story of the three girls who don't have money to be married and he donates the money sneaks into their house and gives them the money so these are good stories to tell the kids well, mm -hmm. actually sometimes he'll give you money he does santa claus doesn't give you money oh saint nicholas does well good. <laughs> yeah. okay yeah, that's right if you're good sometimes yeah. you get some cash money are you requesting that is that what you want to happen i hide it in my sock hide hide it it. Oh. so december 6th is is a good kid kickoff and you know some well some people say do you do santa or not now's not the time to do that because we have our in-house resident mm -hmm. on that but uh, obviously we think it's we think it's fun and we think it's fine mm -hmm. now the one modification this year is the next day is the vigil of the immaculate conception that's december 7th and we've never done this before dear but before the 1900s this day is a day of abstinence. No meat. Oh, the day before the Immaculate Conception? The day Conception? before. It's like a little bitty Lent before the Immaculate Conception. So the Immaculate Conception is on the 8th. And we usually do like a white cake. We do mm -hmm. white cakes for Our Lady's Days. Uh, white inside cake. White outside cake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or white icing. And then white ice cream. Yes. It's white, white, white. Immaculate Conception, Our Lady's uh, preserved from all stain of sin. So we do that. But the day before, and, and this year I'm going to make sure that the family does this, December 7th is going to be no meat. Okay. No meat. We're going to go full old school trad 
It's a day. It's a, if you look at the old pre-55 liturgy, it's a purple day. Well, it's in Lent. But it's the vigil of Immaculate Conception. And so we're going to be extra penitential on December 7th in anticipation of Immaculate Conception on December 8th. And, you know, America is in a bad place right now. And our patron saint is Our Lady Immaculate Conception. So this year I want to make sure we give due honor. Extra fast before and yeah. extra and extra partying on, on the day. On the day. Okay. So that's what we're gonna do. Oh, no. um, okay, here we go. Dear. The next big thing, especially down here in Texas, is Our Lady Guadalupe. Yes. December twelfth, yeah. and we've and historically we've had a big party at our home, and um, we have Mexican food. Mm -hmm. and uh, chips and guacamole and fajitas and margaritas and, and, queso and yeah. all the good stuff but parties kind of get out of control people we didn't invite started showing <laughs> up i'm a little bit more well known now and people kind of odd people show up at our house so we've kind of yeah, we're going to do more of a family. Thing. Yeah, we kind of had the, the big party where strangers were just sort of randomly showing up at the Marshall's house on Guadalupe. Kind of had to kill that, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. We'd have good. music and we'd have all kinds of stuff. But the Marshall um, big open, well, it was never an open party, but it no, turned people it, were like, oh, come to the Marshall's. It'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. So that's over. But we still, on Our Lady Guadalupe, I mean, down here in Texas, Our Lady Guadalupe is a big deal. Oh, yes. Yeah, we'll yeah. go to Mass and every, and there'll be yeah. flowers oh, everywhere. Yeah. Big, um, big picture of the Tilma, <clears throat> Our Lady Guadalupe, huge. Mm -hmm. And so wherever you live in the world, I would encourage you to do some Mexican food. Yep. Joy Clare makes some great Mexican food. Thank you, dear. I mean, we you can also get marinated meats and grill those and vegetables. I mean, it's just always yeah. good. We, we're big fans of the fajitas, chicken and beef. Yeah, we, we do, do both. weekly almost. Make our own guacamole. Not hard to do. Mexican food is pretty easy to do. Refried beans can be a little tricky. but um, And you got to get good tortillas. That's always a trick. Yes. Yep. Uh, we don't make our own tortillas. No, we're not that no. authentic. You can find good ones. Right. So in tamales, someone reminded us. Tamales. Tamales, tamales mm -hmm. are great. That's a great one. Yep. We like the tamales and chili together. Mm. So. Yes, we yeah. do. Yes, we do. We don't do. We don't make a lot of enchiladas. We used to make a lot of enchiladas. We used to do it a lot. Now we're just fajita fiends. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So good. All right. So that's December twelfth. Uh, the next day is Saint Lucy's, December thirteenth. Unfortunately, we don't really have any traditions around that. But it's a Which big one? day. Saint this, Lucy? This Lucy. Yeah. Lucy. Yeah. We'd never. I guess I know some people really do the elaborate. Their oldest daughter has the wreath and. Yeah. But yeah, we've never. I don't know if we could just. Yeah, there's a, there's a tradition. The oldest daughter wears a wreath and has candles and sort of like brings in the light. Yeah, something like that. Something yeah. like that, but we've never done it. Maybe next year mm -hmm. we'll get the St. Lucy thing. But what's important about St. Lucy for all of us traditional Catholics is she ushers in the Ember Days of December. Mm -hmm. And there's a great little uh, rhyme that I heard from Father Zolsdorf, Father Z, and it's Lenti Penti Cruci Lucy. Those are the four ember days. Lenti, Penti, Cruci, Lucy. And it is Lent, Pentecost. Oh, we got something here. Lent, oh, Pentecost, Holy Cross, and Lucy. What do we got here? She was going to get her gnome jammies. Oh, I can't find them. So you're going to so show your sweater. Usually we get something Christmas themed like for the little kids every year. This year she got a Christmas sweater. But that is Some a legit years. sweater. We got <laughs> Christmas trees, Frosty the Snowman. Santa and more Christmas trees all on a pink background and stripes. And stripes. <clears throat> That's, you want to put it on? Show us. So Ember Days, Lenti, Penti, Cruci, Lucy, Lent after the beginning of Lent, Penti after the beginning of Pentecost, uh, Cruci, Holy Cross after Holy Cross, and then Lucy after St. Lucy. That's how you remember when are the four Ember Days. And Ember Days are Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And we pray for our priests and for a new crop of holy priests, which we all need to be doing now. Let's yep. take a moment now to look at the model here wearing the beautiful <laughs> Christmas, Christmas sweater. sweater. I love it. Everyone needs a Christmas sweater sometime in yep. life. There it so. is. 
That looks beautiful. You look great in it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. So, Ember Days are this year, the Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday after December 13th. So, that puts it this year on December 16th, 18th, and 19th. What are you supposed to do on Ember Days? Well, the Friday, you don't eat meat on Friday. So, the Friday and Ember Days just don't eat meat. But at the Wednesday and the Saturday of an Ember Day, it's very easy. Just remember this. You only eat meat at the principal meal, which is usually supper. So meatless breakfast, meatless lunch, eat meat at dinner. It's easy. No big deal. I mean, keeping the Ember Days, this is bare minimum penance. And all Catholics used to do this. Mm -hmm. So Ember Wednesday. What? All right, we're oh, okay. Questions. Lily wants to know when her part is to talk, and we're going to get to your part in just a little bit. Uh, bare minimum, Wednesday, you eat meat only at dinner. That's not a big deal. And then Saturday, you only eat meat at dinner. Yeah. I mean, it just helps encourage a mindfulness. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to maybe add in some extra prayers that day. And by making sure you don't eat meat at a certain time, it just makes the day more intentional, right. more purposeful. And then you tell family, why are we doing this? Dad's like, well, we got to pray that we get good priests. Mm -hmm. We need priests. We got to pray we... for good priests. So, yep. and who's going to argue with that? Yeah, nobody. Nobody. So, um, the next big thing for us is December 21st. Mm -hmm. And we started this when we were Episcopalians. December 21st in the old calendar... And by the way, I, I was going to do it in this video, but we're getting a little long here. I'm going to do a review of all the calendars, which calendar you should get for 2021. All right. I've got the FSSP. They already sent it to me. They want me to review it. I got the Angelus Press, SSPX one. I've got uh, the pre-1955 Oblates of the St. Augustine one. And then I also have on my wall here the St. Gertrude the Great pre-1955 Sede Vacantist published calendar. I'll do all that later. But when we were Episcopalian, St. Thomas was on December 21st. In the Novus Ordo, he's not. But in the traditional calendar, but he is. Yes, okay. So St. Thomas is the patron of India. He evangelized India. Mm -hmm. So way back when we were first married... Mm -hmm. We started doing Indian food. We love Indian food. We love Indian food. We used to food. make it. Now we more order it. <clears throat> but we have some wonderful Indian restaurants nearby. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's just so good. And uh, reminding us the that evangelical spirit, the go out into all the world and preach the gospel of Christ who's come is uh, something really to celebrate, I think. Yep. And to the extent that St. Thomas went as far as India. And yeah. some of our oldest churches are there. That's so, right. So. That's right. So uh, it's a great reason. It kind of teaches your kids, oh, we all eat Indian food on that day. Why? Because one of the apostles, St. Thomas, went all the way to India. I think he went further than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thomas. So, yeah, it's a great, great missionary spirit. So we celebrate that on the 21st. And then we get to Christmas Eve. And this is where I want to make a modification to the Marshall family traditions on Christmas Eve. Traditionally... Yeah. Christmas Eve was treated like a Friday. No meat. Oh, okay. We've never done that. Okay. Um, well, now, was... you always make those, the Mexican meat and bean burritos. Right. We've done that a lot. On Christmas um, Eve. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. <clears throat> That's so okay. I think, we'll figure out something. So I think we're going to do yeah. the old school pre-1955 hmm. no meat on the 24th. Okay. We got it. Got and it. Then... <laughs> All right. You need to ask her a question. All right. You, let's ask you a question. What's your favorite thing about Christmas? Uh, Speak here to the mic. The fun. The fun. <laughs> you like the fun. Do you like when you wake up and there's presents? Yes. yes. About all the time, family comes over for different things. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know what you can tell everyone about. What? You know how there's the foster children? Mm -hmm. What are we going to do for the foster children this year? Uh, tell, so tell we everyone. have five 
the kids, so we'll get we invite a four baby, so we're mm-hmm. gonna go get them gifts. Yes. Five kids and four babies. If you can, please find children that you can shop for. Have your kids each shop for a child. That way they're thinking of somebody else um, or a whole family or whatever the situation. Usually churches have them. Since I wasn't sure if we would see Angel Tree churches this year, there's a website that has you know foster kids you can um, find and sponsor and take presents for, usually mid-December. And so... Um, Definitely add in something that your children are doing for other people and that your whole family's doing. So Mm -hmm. that uh, keeps them in mind and also reminds them to, you know, them uh, count their blessings for, you know, that they have Christmas and a family that cares for them. But then they're also thinking of other people. So definitely do something like that if you can. So you're pretty excited about shopping for four babies, five kids, but four babies. (laughs) What are you going to get the four babies for Christmas? Um, uh, two from Santa and three from what? But I mean, what are you going to get them? Like some onesies? Onesies, pajamas, and diapers. Some diapers and clothes. About some hats to keep warm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hats. But, but we, what about a toy? Like maybe a little. I already have some, a rattle. A, a rattle. Rattles and a... Yeah, some rattles. Okay. That's going to be great. It's going to be great. Now, another thing we're doing different this year that we've never done in our entire life as Catholics is this year we're doing Midnight Mass, traditional Latin Mass, Midnight yeah. Mass. We've always been too afraid because we have eight children and they've always Young been children. little. Yeah. But this year, the kids, we're our not... youngest is five. Mm-hmm. We're thinking we can do it. We're going to go for it. So we're going to go for, for the first time ever, traditional Latin Mass at Midnight Mass. And what time does Midnight Mass begin? Ten. Midnight. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Some churches midnight. it is ten. Yeah. No. no, we're going to the real midnight mm-hmm. mass. And uh it'll be it'll be a challenge, but mm-hmm. we can sleep in a little bit. That's but actually the kids will still wake up early. That's gonna be Yeah, no, I think if we um they'll sleep, sleep in. in. The I think they'll sleep in. Yeah. So. You can sleep at mass probably, right? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're gonna do midnight mass. Yeah. I'm excited. Yes. Because normally okay. Christmas looks like this for us. The kids wake us up at I don't. 6 a.m., <laughs> 5 a.m., and we all have our Christmas jammies on that match. And Joy and I, I get up, I grab my phone so I can start videoing it, mm-hmm. and I turn on the video recorder and I run out there and watch them as they all come in and video them. And then we play and we open the Santa stuff and look at our stockings and see what Santa Claus brought. And then, historically, we would then all rush and put on our Christmas suits. Yeah, go get clothes on, get ready for Mass, go out to Mass. We'd go to Mass and then we'd come Mm -hmm. home and Miss Joy, your mom, would make us. we make a big breakfast lunch. brunch lunch. then we finish kind of opening presents and then everyone comes over family and then, and then we open presents quick clean up again because then everyone's going to come over right. for a big lunch, lunch and more presents with lunch. family and so it gets to be a lot yeah i mean how many and people dinner. were at our house last christmas i don't know, like always more than 20 because yeah. we're i mean we're 10 and then yeah. at least another 10 plus people with family because so, there's four people um almost four yep yeah. And then there's four kids. Yep. So I th- I don't know. I think it was oh, well over twenty last year. And then Probably with yeah. my brother and sister yeah, and, and uncle, yeah. kids and so, aunts and uncles and all that. Uh, yeah. So this year we feel like if we go to midnight mass, then we'll sleep. You know, it won't be quite so many different things yeah. to do Christmas Day. So yeah, yeah, I think it'll be great. Wait, what kind of mass? What do you? It's gonna be high mass. No. <laughs> Wait, the name. Oh, which church? Yeah. Oh, we haven't decided yet. We'll figure that out. We have many Latin Mass options here, so that's great. Very blessed. And then um, after that, December 26th is St. Stephen. December 27th is St. John. That's my feast day. And our church does the blessing of wine. You bring bottles of wine on the 27th, and the priest bless the wine. It's a great mm-hmm. gift to give people on New Year's Day. Mm-hmm. Holy Innocence is December 28th, called Children Mass or Children's Mass. St. Thomas Beckett is December 29th, and St. Sylvester is December 31st. And then New Year's Day. 
That's just the funnest weekend all year long. It's so you fun. Know, the week after Christmas. I like love days. December 6th <laughs> because that's when all the kids, we have time. The fam, the rest of the family's not there and we look at their presents and I get to play with each one of them with their toys mm -hmm. and get to see what you have. And build we just things. build things, open things. I put a lot of batteries into things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, oh, one thing we didn't uh, mention is on December 25th, the evening, it's a little bit harder now because we have teenagers, but Joy and I would recreate the scene from the <laughs> Christmas story where the dad and the mom sit on the couch surrounded by toys and paper and drink a glass of wine or a, a glass of, or wine a glass or... of <laughs> Grand Marnier. Or... Yeah. And then just look at the Christmas tree with all the lights yeah. out and just kind of... Kind of just cuddle on the couch mm -hmm. and... Just be in the afterglow of Christmas. Yeah. It's, like, it's it kind of like, easier to do that when we had little kids. But it's sort of the moment like, I think this is what we say. We did it. Okay. It's okay. We did yeah. it. We did it. Crossed mm -hmm. the finish line. We did Christmas. So My list is full all the way to the bottom. You have a lot of things on your, on your Christmas list, and <laughs> I don't think you're going to get all of that. <laughs> have you been that good? <laughs> She, we made a list yesterday with the kids, and your list was the longest. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, that's a show. That's right. a show. Um, everybody, if you like this video, it's helpful and it has some good ideas, please hit the like button. That's the thumbs up. Let me see you do a thumbs up, Lily. <laughs> good. And then please share it on Facebook, Twitter, and Parlor, or whichever you use. And uh, please subscribe here on YouTube if you're new. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And make sure you're praying the rosary every single day. Rosary. Do you pray the rosary every day? Yep. Do you like it? Do you lead sometimes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Good. Oh, we have another guest <laughs> here on the show. Come join our show. Mags, come up here. What would you like to say to everyone? Happy Advent. Hi. How about Happy Thanksgiving and Blessed Advent? Yes. Can you say, say Happy that? Thanksgiving? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> she just wants to skip She's right ahead. jump right to it. Yeah. Are you excited? <clears throat> Is St. Nicholas going to bring you some pajamas? Yes. Good, good. Sometimes he brings you toys. Sometimes he brings you toys. If you're a real good, good. kid, if you're a really good kid, you get some of that. Okay. So um, pray the rosary every day, and this is a great season, especially for young families, moms and dads with little kids. Hey, kids, let's light the candles on the Advent wreath, and let's pray the rosary. And you know what? If you have screaming babies and little two-year-olds, one decade, good. If mom and dad can finish it. If it's yeah, mom and dad can yeah. finish it later, but at least get one decade in with those little ones, mm -hmm. and they'll start, they'll start learning it. So. Yeah. All right. All right. God bless everybody. Well, we got to pray, Mom. Oh, sorry. All right. We're going to say our, we're going to do an Ave Maria. Okay. Oremus. Nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria. Gratia plena. Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in morieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tu Iesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et ora mortis nostre. Amen. Nomine Patris, Fidii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, everyone. God bless you. Have a happy Thanksgiving and a happy Advent. I hope this video was helpful. And remember our Lord Jesus Christ said you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and... Be, Be salty. salty. <laughs> All right. God bless and Godspeed, everyone. <laughs>